everybody. Here we are doing a double crust pie crust. Okay, so we're doing a standard pastry using the conventional method. So this is your really traditional classic method of making a pie crust. Okay? We're doing the double crust because we're going to fill it with the chicken pot pie mixture as a savory filling. So as um, all pastries, remember pastry is a term for a dough that has a high proportion of fat to flour. And with pie dough, it is also um, called a short pastry because we are using shortening to shorten those gluten strands. So remember with bread, we had a lot of um, gluten that we wanted in our bread. This time we're going back to the um, reduction of gluten. We want to not produce too much gluten in our pie crust. Otherwise, our pie will be tough. So here we are with 375 milliliters of all-purpose flour. Ideally, with pastry, if you can use um, cake and pastry flour, it will make a much more tender crust, okay? Um, but all-purpose will work just fine as long as you're, you're careful not to overwork the gluten. I have measured our shortening. This is the uh, white shortening and it is a vegetable-based fat. You could use lard. Um, in the old days, they used something called lard. Here's an example. Um, and that is very similar, uh, but that's made from animal fats. So we're just using the vegetable shortening version of lard. Okay. I'm gonna pour off that water. So I've used the liquid displacement method to measure our shortening because I want it to be cold. So you'll see the shortening is very cold and hard. And I will put that half of it in first. Okay, so I have another chunk in here we'll put in after. Okay. Because what we're going to do first is cut half of it in as a small chunks, and then the other half we will cut in larger pieces. Okay, so this one, we're gonna use the pastry blender to cut it into small pieces. Remember, if you're at home, you could just use two uh, butter knives if you don't have the pastry blender. So the two butter knives, I would do like this, cutting across into small pieces, okay? Since I do have the pastry blender, I am gonna use it. It'll make it a little bit faster. Okay, the colder all your ingredients are, the better and the flakier your crust will be. Okay, so just like when we were making biscuits, remember we wanted those layers in the biscuits? Well, the same thing is happening here with the pie crust. We want the bigger chunks that will cause uh, nice flaky layers. Okay, now the smaller chunks that we did the first time when I cut the first half of the shortening in, that will make the crust nice and tender. Okay, so it will um, really prevent that gluten formation of the flour. And that's why it's called shortening. It shortens the gluten strands that would form if you overwork this dough. So having chunks of small, small chunks of fat help to make the crust tender, larger chunks of fat help to make it flaky and layered. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna go underneath a little bit to check if there's any really large chunks. Okay. I'm on step four where it says gradually sprinkle in um, cold water. So make sure your water is cold. Measured 60 milliliters in here. And I have even put a couple of chunks of ice. You can see a slight chunk of ice still remaining and that has made it nice and cold. So um, put it in early so it can melt um, into the water because you don't want chunks of ice in your dough, but you want ice cold water. So what I'm gonna do is sprinkle it in 
around the dough, around the flour mixture. Just like we did with a biscuit dough, you're gonna sprinkle it around everywhere, not dumping it in all at once, but sprinkling it all over. So I'm leaving about uh, just under half there, and we're gonna use a fork to toss this around. Once you've got that little bit of water mixed in, we're gonna sprinkle the rest in. You may or may not need to use all of it. So a little at a time, just where it's needed, remember? Notice the dough is wrapped around the fork. Okay, so that's a good sign. And try not to be tempted to add too much water, even though it looks a little bit Hi, Toffee, that's my dog. <laughs> Even if it looks a little bit flaky. Okay. Even if it looks a little bit dry, when you gather it up with your hands, it should be able to gather up into a bowl. Don't forget to take your jewelry off and we're going to form it into a ball so you can pour it um, onto a lightly floured surface or just form it right into the bowl. And if you need to add just a few dribbles of water at this point, you can just where it is dry. Okay, here we have uh, divided the ball into two and then flattened each little ball into a disc. We're going to wrap this up with some saran wrap and chill it in the fridge. So if it doesn't look really great right now, don't worry, it might look a little bit cracked and later when it, when it settles in the fridge and chills, it will be much easier to roll out, okay? But it should be holding together, okay? So make sure it does hold together. If it doesn't, a tiny dribble more of moisture might be needed, okay? So I'll wrap this up and put it into the fridge for about half an hour. It will make rolling your crust much easier. There they are, ready to go into the fridge. Okay, I browned both sides of the chicken. And you could continue to cook this way if you like, or I like basting my chicken just to be a little bit healthier than adding I don't have to add quite as much oil. You could just baste it with a little chicken stock and let it cook. Put the lid on. And okay, we're going to chop up our vegetables while the chicken is cooking and while the dough, uh, pie crust dough, is chilling in the fridge. Okay, so we're going to need some onion, carrots, celery, um, mushrooms, and peas as your vegetables, but really you could put anything in this chicken pot pie. It's a quick way to get your vegetables chopped, your onions chopped quickly. You just peel that but keep this end together and then you're going to slice down with the point of your knife okay, and make strips in that onion. Okay, I've cut strips going this way with the knife, but attached at this end still so that that will hold it all together. So now we're gonna curl your fingers up and cut across this way, and it will all be into small diced pieces like that. With the celery, you're going to cut the ends off because they'll probably be dry or brown. You can cut them into strips in half and then into small strips. You want to make sure they are small, not too big. When you bite into the pie, you don't want a big chunk of celery.
there's our chopped up vegetables. Okay, and they're ready to be sauteed um, after your chicken is done. And then we'll cut up our chicken as well and mix it all with a creamy sauce. And there's our chicken breast. After we've cooked it, we wanna check into the middle of it, make sure it is not pink inside. Okay, so you wanna make sure there's no pink left in there. Okay, it looks well cooked all the way through. And we'll let that cool a little bit and then chop it up into cubes. So I've got a little bit of oil in my pan that I cooked my chicken in. After I took the chicken out, I add a little more oil in there and start sauteing your onion, celery, and carrot. I know the recipe tells you to put your onions in later, but I'm showing you an alternative um, recipe now to add your onions at this point and later we will just make a roux and make a thickened sauce. And we are separating the flour particles with fat. So this is now called a roux. Okay. So you need to coat those flour particles with the butter or margarine, with the fat. And it should look a bit like a paste. You need to allow the um, flour particles to absorb some of that fat and the fat to get in between each particle. You want to cook the flour a little bit so it doesn't have a starchy taste to it. Okay. So we're going to stir that for at least a minute and let that cook up on a lower heat, low to medium heat. Okay. Then you're going to take it off and add your liquid. So it will look thin at first, but once you get it up to a boil, it will start to thicken. It will almost be magical. It will seem like nothing happens, nothing happens, and then it will thicken. I want it to be like a gravy consistency. Okay, so it's nice and thick now. It's like a gravy and that only took about a minute to three minutes so it really depends on how high you get, have the heat and how much sauce you have in here like I said I had a larger amount than your recipe says so it took a little bit longer but this is about the good consistency Okay, we've uh, made our filling, we have done our dough, now we need to roll it out. So take a disc that might look a little bigger, hopefully they're the same size, but use the bigger one for your base. Okay, I've got a glass pie plate, it's an 8 inch pie plate. Um, if you have a metal one, that's fine too. The recipe asks for two small ones, and I'm sure a lot of people don't have mini ones at home like we do in classroom, in the classroom. So I'm just making one big pie plate, pie. 
Okay, so a bigger pot. Now lightly dust, do not add too much flour. It will make your crust crumbly and dry, so we don't want to add too much flour. It is totally solid now, which is nice. Lightly flour your rolling pin. Okay, and you're going to push down, forward, down, back. It's okay if it starts to crack. Okay, just be a little gentler. Don't push down so hard and just be gentle as you go in different directions. If it's sticking, keep adding a little bit of flour at a time, but not too much. Okay, keep going different directions, and I'm being really gentle as I roll. It's starting to crack a bit here, but that's okay. Just push that back, okay? And give it a little gentle pressure with your fingers if it's starting to crack too much, okay? So you see, once we get rolling, just be gentle, don't push down too hard. Remember every once in a while to check underneath that it's not sticking. It does feel like it's sticking, so I'm glad I've checked. Loosen it up and put a little bit more flour underneath. Okay, so check every once in a while to make sure it's not stuck. How to get it onto your pie plate is we are not going to lift it. We don't want to stretch it out at all. Okay, so what we're going to do is use our rolling pin, wrap it around the rolling pin, making sure it's not stuck. If it seems a little bit sticky, then use your metal spatula and just get under there. So you're rolling it up and have it wrapping around your rolling pin. Hold on to it. Okay, and you're going to let that loose and you're transferring that dough into that pie crust, pie plate. Okay, do not push that dough down, let it fall into the plate. If there's anywhere that needs patch. Okay, we're going to put our filling in now and then roll out the top and I'll show you how to put the top on. Okay, we're going to roll out the second block of dough for the top. We filled the pie with the filling. Don't forget I've doubled the filling recipe so I have a lot more filling than you might so you might want to double it yourself as well for your family and we'll roll this one out the same way we did the last one. Now with these edges, we can roll that under and tuck it in with the other crust. Make sure you pinch them together and that way the seal will be made. As long as both bottom crust and top crust are pinched together. Okay, I'm just looking underneath, I'll show you there. So there's two crusts, I'm going to roll this over and pinch it. to make sure they are sealed. That way it will prevent the filling, the chicken filling and the sauce from coming out. Another thing I want to show you is if you had too much overlapping, you could take a sharp knife and cut off that edge if you like. So you can just saw that edge off if there's too much pastry on the edge. 
Okay, so let's say you had a big chunk there. You can use a sharp knife and just cut it, or even scissors. Okay, kitchen scissors, kitchen shears. Okay, I also want to show you how to flute it. Okay, so I'm pinching with my thumb pushing in, my finger pushing the opposite direction, and that gives you a nice fluted look. Traditionally, you probably have your long vent on top and a couple of small ones on either side. Okay, this is needed to allow the steam to escape and not be squirting out the sides of your pie. on the lower rack. Pastry cooks better often on the lower rack. And also if you notice I've put a tray at the bottom to catch any drippings that may escape from the pie. Okay, the timer has gone off and I'm just going to go in and look. I have two pies, one that I put in a little bit later, so I'm going to show you what we're looking for. You see how this one's golden brown? and there's no translucency around the... Um, and this one is much lighter. And you can see it's kind of got a clear, translucent look around here. Do you see that? It's white, but also kind of clear, doughy looking. Okay, there's our chicken pot pie for our dinner. There's the insides. And you can see the flaky crust in there. 